what we did yesterday was we compressed logarithms. So we had two logarithms, and we learned some properties that would help us rewrite them into one, right? Today we're doing the opposite of that. We're taking one logarithm, and we're expanding it, which means rewriting it into several. Um, and we'll use those same properties from yesterday, all right? One thing that this word, all these words, one thing I just want to point out to you is this. It's a reminder that if you have a root of something, like let's say you have the cube root of x, you can rewrite that with a rational power, meaning a power that's a fraction. That's x to the one-third, okay, which will come in handy because yesterday we learned a property that said if you have a log of something with a power, what can you do with that power? No. Move it. Put it in the front. The coefficient. Okay, so we'll use that today. Um, this very first problem we're going to save for last because it's crazy. So we're going to go to a simpler one first. So find this part on your notes. Um, the log of the cube root of 34, the directions say use the power property of logs to rewrite each term as the product, which means we're going to be multiplying some stuff, of a constant, which is just a number, and a log. So we need a number times a log. That's what we're trying to do here. Right now we have just a log of a number. What did I just um, t show you, talk to you about in the slide before? How can we rewrite this root? As a fraction. As a, as a fraction, right? So this would be log of 34 to the what? One third. But it's still not a constant times a log. What am I going to do with that power? Move it to the front. These are equivalent expressions. And these skills we're working on these days, we're about to use when we solve equations over the next several days. So we're just practicing them now. So one third log of 34. Done. That's done. Does anybody need this up anymore? Okay, this one also says to use the power property, but here's the problem. I don't see a power anywhere. How could I rewrite this so that there was a power? 11 squared, absolutely, okay? So be aware of how you might be able to write things as squares or cubes or something like that. Bless you. So log base 7 of 11 squared. Now guess what I'm going to do with that 2? Bless you. Move it to the front, right? So it's going to become a coefficient 2 log base 7 of 11. Anybody need that up anymore? You all got that? Okay. Again, use the power property to rewrite. What's the power here? 3x plus, plus 2. What am I going to do with that power? Three. Move it to the front. The whole thing. Move it to the front. However, this, hold on, that's not what I want. What do you think I need to add in here? Parentheses around what? The 3x plus 2. Very good. Okay. Not the natural log because that's still just going to be times 2. It's all of this as a coefficient times the natural log of 10. All right, so that's fine. That was fun. Let's go back to the original problem. It's kind of crazy. So this problem right here. Yesterday, if we had two logs being subtracted, we compressed it into one log that was division. So right here, I'm going to do the opposite of that. It's one log. I'm going to break it up into two, and I'll be doing what with them? Subtracting. Okay. So the first log is going to be log base 7 of what? The top or the bottom comes first? The top, right? So I have 4ab squared minus log base 7 of c cubed b. Now, I can't do anything with those powers yet, okay? And the reason is because they're very, they're on specific variables. This 2 only goes with that b. So I can't bring it out here unless everything here had that squared. So what I need to do next is break those up into smaller logs. So this is log base 7 of 4ab squared. How do you think I can break this up into what addition? Because that's how many things being multiplied right there? 3, a 4, an a, and a b squared. 
So that one log I can break up into three logs where they're each separate. So and using addition, right? If it's originally division, you make it subtraction. When it's multiplication, you break it up with addition. So this becomes log base 7 of 4 plus log base 7 of A plus log base 7 of B squared. We expanded that one into three different logs. How many logs can I expand that second term into? Two. I have a C cubed and I have a D. The problem becomes here with this minus. So let, I'm going to write it how I think you're going to do it, and then I'll tell you why that would be wrong. All right? I think you would probably do this. Minus log base 7 of C cubed, and then you're like, oh, hey, those are being multiplied. I'm going to break it up into addition like this. What's bad about this right here? Yeah. See this minus? This minus means you're going to subtract off whatever comes behind it. And you just broke this up into two things. Both of those things are going to have to be subtracted. Okay, so be very, very careful when you're subtracting stuff that you're expanding that you distribute that subtraction to every new piece. All right, every new piece is getting subtracted off. So really this is a negative here and a negative here. But there's one other thing that we have to take care of. How many powers do you see? Two. What are we going to do with those powers? Put them in the front. Only of those individual terms. Okay, not on the front of the whole thing, just for that single term. So right here, log base 7 of b squared, this 2 is going to come in front of this term. This 3 is going to come in front of this term only, because it only belongs there. So our final, final answer is this. Log base 7 of 4, that's fine. Plus log base 7 of 8, nothing else I can do there. Plus, now here's where the 2 comes out front here. 2 log base 7b, oh my goodness, minus the 3 comes out front, 3 log base 7 of c. What's the sign on the next term? Minus sign, because I've got to subtract that. It's going to be minus log base 7 of B. And that is your answer. Goodness gracious. Yes? Is that a difference if it's minus minus? Yeah, sure. No problem. That is not a problem. I really just wanted to show the parentheses for the visual that everything after that subtraction is the same. But you don't have to if you can remember to make it a minus. So the goal here on these problems is to keep expanding until you can't expand anymore, or to keep simplifying until you can't, using those properties from yesterday. All right? And that's it. We're done.